Welcome uh, to our online viewers. My name is Tim Rawlinson, and here at London Glass Blowing, we're very happy to present demonstration by John Moran, winner of season three's uh, Blown Away on Netflix. Uh, making a teddy bear from a series of work that started on the show. One of the sort of final pieces was about these sort of abandoned stuffed animals. Uh, so we've got different components of the bear in kilns keeping warm and John is just working on the head so you can see the eyes and the ears are in place and he started to work some texture into the glass. If anyone online has any questions please feel free to leave a comment and we'll do our best to answer them. What component are you making now Katie? I think the mouth. The think the mouth. Yeah, the snout. <laughs> you can see how innately valuable the hot torch is to working this way. You know, you really are just heating up very specific pieces of the glass to then distort it. If you would, we were talking earlier about when the torch came into sort of general glass making. John was saying about early 2000s was when that happened. It's still relatively new in terms of it being used in the, the art moment, form. No. I think when we go over assembly, maybe uh, it's just at the hand. The, but the real bonus maybe. of something like that is if he had to try and get the whole really thing hot to distort though. or manipulate it, you would just start melting the texture away. You would lose that element of detail that he's putting into it. However, because he's not getting the whole thing very hot, just warm enough that it doesn't crack, he keeps all these lovely bits of texture and different sculpting detail that he's put into the work. I'm ready if you are, Katie. Uh, it doesn't have to be crazy, just cuttable. Is this the mouth of the bed? Yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Straight up. It's a really brave way of working with glass because you could have something that you really like and you can see all these different elements you're adding to it. You've got to be really quite courageous to not fear mistakes. Uh, maybe and, uh, good for a few minutes. I, like, I really like the freedom with the way which John works. And I think that's what gives the pieces sort of their individuality and their sense of character. You just put a sort of handful of glass powder into the mouth? Yep. Nice. Yeah, I have this specialized tool for it that I found it in Canada, actually. It's a bricklaying tool, I think. <laughs> yes. Button those. Yep. I, I think you deal with quite challenging concepts in your work. Yeah. Uh, again, that's part, I think, of the bravery of some of the work that you're doing. Thank you. I try not to think about it that way. Like, it's just kind of what's happening in the world. So I'm thinking about it, commenting on it. So that's part one of the assembly. So we now have the head of a bear in one kiln. We've got two arms in another kiln. 
John's going to start to make the torso of the bear, of which you'll add legs to, uh, fresh. Then you'll be adding the previously made arms and head. Minute, Come on, Mr. Walker. Really Stop give gabbing. Hey, I just, can you just stand in front of the glory hole and block the heat? Yeah. So two blown away winners. Oh. <laughs> now you can answer questions. Yeah. <laughs> and asking how many glass makers it takes to make a teddy bear. I'm going to make a bubble. Put a couple bits on it for legs so now I have to texture everything. Punchy that up. Texture the rest of it up. Oh, that's a good question. So how many episodes did you win, John? I think six. And Elliot? <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's a competition. Oh yeah, it's, li it's literally a competition. Hi. So again, they're just cooling off the uh, the iron, so that it's able to hold it up closer to the glass itself, giving you better control. John, we have a question about the, the timing of the episodes for each project. Was it generous or like how long did you get for each? I mean, not, you don't get it in the, in the same moment, but like you get it the night before. At the end of the day, so you can sleeplessly lay in bed trying to think about what you're going to do the next day. And then the actual making time? That was, uh, that was correct. So if we had four hours, we had four hours. It okay. wasn't... Uh, Oh, it wasn't the same for each project? No, each one, no, but like the, the talking and all that stuff, that was done in the morning separately mm -hmm. when we get introduced. But then the glass blowing time was real, so you'd wait around all day to blow glass. Eventually. Would you, would you be able to get a blow? Yes, please, if that's possible. Uh, yes, please. Oh, yeah. Final bit of clear glass off the end of the piece. And he'll cut that away. So, John, the end of this piece is that the end of the bear or the top of the bear? What? Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Uh, the orientation. Uh, so I will punty this, so that'll be the butt of the bear. Yeah. So right now we'll make the body, put the legs on it, punty it, then we'll put the arms and the head on. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How they do a jigsaw? Yeah. Take a grab one of those. Uh, thank you. Things I didn't think about. Can you for me, Katie? There's a wooden board down there. So are you starting to make one of the legs? Yes. I think we're going to do both from the same bit. There's a question online, John, asking about the symbolism behind Mickey Mouse. I guess I mean the Mickey Maury, mm -hmm. which is what we've got on our T-shirts. This is one of John's designs. Yeah, the Mickey Maury is basically like, uh, like the whole thing came from like the death of the copyright, so like the artists, like when Walt Disney designed Mickey Mouse, the copyright law was that he would own it after his death for 20 years or something, but then Disney Corporation stepped in, or Disney Company, and extended that copyright so the corporation owned it, which kind of took the white rights of an individual and gave it to a corporation. And they extended that rule over the years, but then also kind of set story to like uh, some of our political structure in the US that like a corporation has similar rights as an individual for like donations and campaigns and for uh, 
rights as the as like a inheritance or whatever, not inheritance or whatever. But yeah, it, so that they have the similar rights. So this whole piece comes from that, like that copyright same, now Gives a corporation the same power as an individual. Yes, yeah, and that's what this piece is about to make you more remember that this thing will die. But it's a kind of playful image based on it. But it's something that it used as a symbol for things a lot of times. Have you been contacted by Disney? Have you had any sort of legal? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> So just continuing with that wire brush to get the texture all across the surface to give that fur feeling. A little bit more. A little bit more. So if you think that that's the torso, okay, flash and Elliot's got one leg of four and no head, it's going to end up to be quite a substantial piece in the end. Do you sometimes get caught out when you're doing multi-component pieces in terms of the size and the weight? Well, I'm, like, I'm pretty good at weight. knowing that I should start, like when I start on a bigger pipe or punting, it seems small when you just go there, but I know it's going to grow. But I've made mistakes. That like I've made something on too small of a punty and then you just start assembling, you realize it's giant. So it always feels ridiculous to start on a big pipe or a bigger punty, but you know it's going to get heavy. So. But yeah, when I was in Corning, I made a piece that got really, really big. And I made a mistake in scale, which I very rarely do in that now, I think. Uh, there's a question about asking about future work and what you might have made on the series that you then have got ideas to continue with. Obviously, this is a continuation of your final piece. I think there's some stuff that I had like like a lot of that work, I try to hold true to myself, like what I would do anyway. So there's stuff that's been inspired later. Like I've been doing some stuff with skulls that touch on that piece, like what that I made with the planet and the skull. And but most of it's like a one-off. Like I don't really repeat a lot of things. Like I'll make a series of something, but but a lot of the concepts are there. There's similar concepts linked into it, but nothing specific at the moment. Turn, please. But the concept for my final installation is something that I've been working on, like that the kind of perception and reality and uh, dealing with like... Um, is it about abandonment? A little bit, but it's also about like breaking like misconceptions. So like that white gallery space that was supposed to fill. Yeah. And then using the floor as just the element to like showcase that little flash please, thing of life. So instead of it being full of space, it was like full of emptiness. And then there was this, this little thing of life, like that kind of concept I've been using over and over again, that there's these like elements of something growing out of nothingness. But it's about like perception, about like our reality that we live in, but also the way that people see who we, like as we see ourselves, but as other people see us. A lot of it came from like COVID when we just were locked in rooms by ourselves, thinking about everybody's life at that moment. But again, that was very brave with your final piece. I mean, you've got this large space, and you choose to, to just have a small part of it filled, yeah. which I think gave it a lot more presence and power. But again, it's an element of bravery, I think, with your work. Yeah, it was. I had to. They didn't that, want me to do that. Were you scared with that? Was that? I, was, I knew it was what I had to do, but it was not a, a popular idea amongst. Uh, I mean, there was pressure from the... Like the production the team was afraid it was going to look like nothing on TV. And they were like, we don't want you to go home because you made something nobody sees uh, or like lose because of that. So the next part will be to attach uh, the first leg. So that's the glass that Elliot's been shaping and forming. And that will be going on the bottom yeah, of the yeah. piece to create one of the, uh, the legs of the bear. There was a question about uh, watching the show back. Have you watched your own show back? Can you watch yourself on TV? And how did you, fi how did you find 
then seeing the judges talk about your work, did you agree with what they were saying? Or? I would hear it back, you know, I was like, oh, all right. But I didn't realize it till seeing the show that so much of the criticism was actually really my own criticism of myself. <laughs> So I agreed with all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, Katie, I'm, uh, I'm good. Yeah, and I could probably, if it's hot enough, I'll take all of them. I'll take the two feet and the tail, fluffy tail. So Katie's got a piece of solid white glass. Uh, this will be used to make the feet. Yeah, little pads on the feet and the tail. Are you ready? All right, I can take it. Let me get a quick. Nope. <laughs> Ow. Can you seat that a little? Uh, we'll do one more heat with that. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Should be good, Elliot. Just, uh, yeah. I'm still trying to work it out with it, not overheating it. And <laughs> but I think the hole's cooled down quite a bit, so. Yeah. But if you see that, like, my, I'm working too cold, I'm, don't, uh, don't worry about flashing it. What are you doing for the fancy, sorry? I said I'm going to texture the rest of this. And then we'll be close to punting. Uh, what is it? Uh, we'll do a blown, blow, oh, wait. Should, okay. should, blow, we should put a, another blow, pipe up. I do yeah. a blow punty maybe. What, do you want a big punty? Do we have a big pipe like this? Yeah. If they were to do a sort of champion of champion, or the, the ultimate blown away, would you guys go back? Would you go back? We were talking about it last night, about how they need to like outdo themselves. Yeah. Every year, but like the possibly in the cruelty to the contestants. So <laughs> I think by the time they do a champ of champs, but by the time they got enough people, yeah, it'll be pretty brutal. I think really. Should be a million dollar prize. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think they should be made to work with uh, first year students. Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Flip. So uh, John's got a special drill bit there, a yeah. uh, piece of tungsten. So he's drilling a hole in the bottom of the bear before he attaches right. the next blowpipe so that it's not completely sealed up. It just helps when you're annealing oh, the chicken wire. to have that opening. If it's completely sealed, you'd have to treat it as a solid piece. But as it's a vessel with a hollow opening, do you want to, it uh, then uh, make it like makes a it a lot. It line. protects it when you're annealing it, so when you're cooling it down. You got the bench if you need it too. Elliot's blowing through the punty because it's on a blowing iron. It means when you attach it, you still have got the ability to blow back into the piece. Trying to make sure he has space to get in and out of the bench. Oh, Elliot. Got a tag. So that's a particularly large punty iron. It just means with something heavy like this, that's solid, you've got a lot more stability. If it was too yeah. small, there'd be a danger of it breaking off and it would just be harder to control. Yeah. So now the temperature's right, you can attach Push that punty iron to the bottom of the bear. Cool 
I think. That's fine. It's connected good, so. Pull away again. Yeah. You got a hose right between your feet, mate. I oh, know. <laughs> Feeling good or? A little bit longer. A little gooey. It's gonna be a mover. It's gonna be a little bit of a mover. Don't worry about flashing the front here, just. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. have it in front of them. Okay. So now the temperatures are right. John can put some water on that stress line. He's going to strike the iron. And the piece will come off his and onto Elliot's. So do you guys only work together on demonstrations? Uh, well, John helped me out in France when I was doing a, a demo as part of a residency, so it's nice to be able to return the favour. Yeah, nobody knew I was on the show at that point. Yeah. Flip. <laughs> so it's obviously still, it's quite neat and polished where that's broken off. So John's just applying more of that texture so you get that fur overall. Turn a little bit that way. Yeah, it's nice With some sculpting in this way, you would use the opening of the bubble to put tools inside, and then you can sculpt from within, create uh, a form outside, pushing through through the bubble. Uh, that's both when it comes to the arm being on. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to be. Okay, <laughs> flash, Elliot. All right. Just the one for now, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting up to the point now where we're going to attach yes, the first fine. arm. Yeah, yeah. So you've had to make yeah, sure that the, the heat's right in this kiln for so sure, it doesn't sure. crack when it comes out. So you'll come all the way to the outside of the bench, but this way up. That way up? Yep. As in like that? No, no, no. The way like you that. just had it. Okay. Yeah. So rather than that arm looking separate from the piece, John starts to manipulate the texture where it's joined. John, have you always sort of worked with creating components rather than sculpting from one whole piece? Or? It depends on what I'm making, Flip. If it has appendages, yes. <laughs> Flash, please. If it's like, like a head or a skull or something, I'll work with one solid object, but like whenever it has arms or legs, like I'll typically add. I mean, I've learned to do like the torso and stuff like that, but it doesn't work for me. I prefer to be able to really focus on each part. I'm gonna pull that arm again, so. You're too really overdressed for this. Okay, flash please. Yeah. Let's figure out where through that. Right. All right. So this is a it's a, it's a hollow vessel. So John started good, to just yeah. open up the cavity in the chest. Part of his work has Flip. a gruesome element, maybe I'd say, of uh, having sort of the idea of these internal organs coming out of the bears. So that John has pre-made uh, an organ in the kiln. Should I tell them what you made, John? Yeah, you can tell them. An organ sounds 
Nefarious. Yeah. Flip. <laughs> Flip. So, yeah, there's a heart inside of the kiln there that John's going to attach later. Is it to look like he's pulled his own heart out or that this has happened to the bear? I think that's What's kind the... of the, the question. So you want some ambiguity then? Yeah. <laughs> All right, flash please. That one, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, flash please. Nice. A heart. I'm grabbing the heart from there. Yeah. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to do a. To do something first. Okay, short flash, Elliot. So this is some cane or stringers that John made earlier, a solid bit of color. He's able just to heat that up and almost draw with it. So it's going to be the effect of almost like spots of blood on the chest of the bear. Clip. 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 Oh, sorry. It's going to go one in the hand anyway, so. <laughs> I'm guessing Netflix has like a PG Flash rating. Please. Something like that. Away. Yeah. Are some of these uh, pushing the... I mean, I made pieces about stuff I was serious They just didn't show everything. Let's say it like that. Like the little bird that I made when Elliot was the guest actually was like about suicide and they didn't show that at all in the... Come on back. Like about like artists who commit suicide specifically. Flip. So did they have to approve of everything that you were making? Uh, sort of, but they did give us a lot of freedom, but they just edited it <laughs> if they didn't want to show what it was. Black All right, now I can stick it. So the glass colors always appear very different when they're hot to when they're cold. So you're not going to quite see and, that true uh, effect until it's cold. It's basically, so. Hold steady. Yeah. But I might do a heat in between, so. Okay. All right. I'll do it right now. Nice. Flash, please. Yeah, like one little uh, adjustment to make on that. Yeah. And then we'll stick the head on. And I'm too late, but. <laughs> Flip. Slowly. Yeah, we'll do one torch, one flash, and then I'll pretty much be right here to stick. So yeah, when you come out this time, do what you just did. You get an extra second, and I'll jam the head on. Extra second on the torch. Yeah. yeah right. All right. Oh, wrong side. <laughs> it's hard to tell now. Yeah. Oh. I have sweat Split. in my eyes. Flip. <laughs> Flip again. Good me. Right there. Yeah. I'm going to get in there. Flip. Turn that way a little bit. Flash.
trying to gauge the angle of the eyes and then the connection of the neck to get that. That he's looking up and that like. So this is kind of a straight line, flash waves. So like it creates the like you know the triangle, the uh, Trinity triangle. Oh, it's come together very nice. Thanks. Should be good eye. Who's putting it in? So that, that's no, the finished okay. piece now. They're just equalizing the temperatures. You want to make sure you've got an even temperature before putting the piece away. If you had different parts that were maybe cooler than the rest, it could crack. Yeah, it's got a bit. So it's just sort of fleshing it down, so getting that equal temperature throughout the piece. Up, yeah. And then it'll be put away put in, in the kiln pretty shortly. Oh, right, okay. No, 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 I don't want to just cut the pumpkin a little bit. Oh, right, okay. We're not ready to... Uh... Okay, oh, it's okay. So yeah, just the final part now. Just like to thank uh, Anthony Scala and his dad Dante, who've been doing the stream today and filming, and a wonderful job. So thank you very much. You guys can get a little bit of an idea of the expression and everything in the piece. Are we gonna take it off from the bench or? Think so? We can take it off over there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just clamp it with the jacks or something. Alright. It's a short flash. Well, I definitely want to get water on it. So. Yeah. Is there okay, water we'll over there, here. Katie? No, I think it's just here. I'm yeah. gonna do it with water just because of that. I okay. just heated that, but that's good. I want that. That's yeah, Tim. Tim. I'll come underneath here. Yeah, is that okay? Flip. Okay. Grab it. Let's pull. Perfect. I didn't want to break out the bottom from that. Yeah, yeah. Nice work. Nice. Yeah.